welcome to Garden City Presbyterian Church to our worship service this morning. I have a couple of announcements. The first is, has to do with the office. The office will be closed on Monday because of the uh, Labor Day holiday. And um, the hours next week for the office to be open will be a little different. So from Tuesday to Thursday, the office will be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Friday, 10 to 12 at their normal um, hours. Um, beginning today, uh, Faith Community is um, the church that is on the other side of the, uh, or the fellowship that is on other, the other side of the partition here. They'll be worshiping with us. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little uh, later in the service. Um, uh, they are offering a, and hosting a fellowship time, a meet and greet for us next week. Uh, they're providing all the food. So it's a luncheon next Sunday. Uh, I do know they're, they're doing uh, burgers, maybe hot dogs, and sightings, and we're all invited. So please, if you're here, just plan on staying a few moments just to meet some of our uh, the people that are nesting in our church. Um, also next Sunday, September 10th, this will be the third time we're uh, participating in the, Ste in the Stevens Park. It's a day of remembrance and honoring our first responders. So on September 10th, next Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m., a lot of the churches in the Ministerial Alliance We'll be meeting at Stevens Park, and we will have a, a, we will have a program, but we'll also have a worship in the park, praise in the park. Um, the water fountains have been um, replaced, so we, they are now operational and working. Um, and also, we have a bottle filling station on that. So if you've ever been in an airport or somewhere where they have that extra thing on the wall where you can place your, your, um, your bottles under it, we now have that in both locations. So please um, use them so that we can, um, it'll tell you how many bottles we have saved, the plastic bottles we have saved by just using those fountains. And the water's pretty good too, just to, <coughs> I, I've tried it. I think Joe has tried it. I don't know who else might have tried it. You did too. See, yeah. So it's it, the water's the water's really well filtered, and we will uh, get an, another. You know, we just have to replace filters. Uh, we do still have the Shepner's water, which will be moving back to the office area eventually. Are there any other announcements? If there's no other announcements, let us worship God. God of our ancestors, call us to worship. Praise the Lord. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. for a prayer of adoration. God of mystery and might, whose wonderful works are to be remembered, move in our lives, 
change our minds, soften our hearts, and direct our feet, that we may follow you more faithfully. Yes, Lord, we seek to follow Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us in the hymn of praise from the American African uh, hymn, uh, hymnal. I will call upon the Lord, number 109. farther before we move farther I do want to let you know that our very own Joanne Mangan wrote those slides so those are handwritten and she, yeah, oh lord because you know that's what she's doing oh lord but yes she did so that thank you very much for doing that Jesus Christ overcame evil with good so that all people might be saved from sin. Let us then confess our need for grace, confident in God's forgiveness. Holy God, we confess that our love for you and for others has not been genuine. We have not held fast to what is good, and we have lied in affection for our brothers and sisters. We have not been patient in suffering, nor have we persevered in Hear the good news. Christ has broken the power of sin and evil and has opened to us the way of eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us take a moment to stand and greet one another with a sign of peace by turning and waving to one another. And those that are on the live stream, we can bump elbows, we can bump fists, we can wave. And uh, Brenda's not here today, but she does this the wave thing to get everybody. So I'm oh, just making sure to get everybody this morning. All right, and <laughs> let us remain standing as we sing our hymn of forgiveness. All power. 
-hmm. Enter hospitality. And you can see all of the other ones there. We are going to look at Romans today. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone for evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So, what makes you feel loved? Oh, kind words. Kind words. What? Kind deeds. kind deeds. Okay. Oh, yes. That's one of the things that I have, I keep reminding the kids at school to, when they talk to me, look at me, not something else. Look at me. I got to be able to make sure your lips are saying what I'm seeing. <laughs> so, yes. It's good to look other people into the eye. How do you show that you are loved? Smile. Smile. Doing the same actions back that you just told me about that makes you feel loved. Okay? Huh? Well, that's, a, that's always a good thing, right? And, huh? Hugs. Hugs are always good. But we need to remember to ask people first before you, because some people are not huggers. I know some people that are really good huggers, and yeah, okay. I like to, but I like to be asked first. I mean, that way I, because I never know where to put my nose on the shoulder. <laughs> okay. Anyway, our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans and talks about how we love one another. Paul assumes that the people already know they should love each other, but he challenges them to make sure their love is genuine. This morning we were talking about hypocrites. And this goes right along with this, I think, because if your love is genuine, you're not hypocritical about it. Gen what? Hypocrite. Hypocrite. It means that in the olden times, back in um, the Greek, it was to pretend to be part of a play. And then it went on to the other added things of what we know it today is, as far as saying one thing out of one side of the mouth and meaning something totally different. So. Genuine means real and honest. Paul goes on to offer a list of ways to be genuine. Extend hospitality. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Keep, weep with those who weep. Overcome evil with good.
when we do these things, we are doing it out of genuine love and concern of the other person. It's hard to do sometimes, but we need to practice these with each other and with everyone around us. Would you pray with me, please? Holy God, we know you love everyone and call us to love each other too. Help us be genuine, honest, and real with love even when it's hard. Help us to show our love through our actions and deeds. Amen. Okay, let us stand and join in the hymn scene of um, 380 in the African American Heritage Hymnal, and it's verses 1, 4, and 5, I believe. Okay? So, By the power of your spirit, O Lord, make your word become a joy to us and the delight of our hearts. Amen. The first reading. Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity. I have trusted the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart, for I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gathering of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. <clears throat> I wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, O Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Our second reading comes from Matthew 16, chapter, verses 21 to 28. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly 
that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of the law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Well, Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please pray with me. Merciful God, thank you for this day and the ability to have a place to worship without fear. Lord, I ask that as we enter into this communion Sunday, we remember who you have called us to be. Open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and our mouths to speak your words. I ask that the words you have given me for this day are your words, and that the meditation of our collective hearts are acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our salvation. Amen. So our reading in Psalm 26 can leave us with many questions about the author. This psalm is often called a psalm of innocence and does not have things in common with the Matthew passage that was also read today. My first question was what happened for this author to ask for vindication? It was the very first thing he asked for. Vindicate me, O Lord. So vindication is another word for acquittal or exoneration. Vindication is defined by Oxford languages as the action of clearing someone of blame or suspicion or proof that someone or something is right, reasonable, or justified. Has this author had the experience of persecution, of being unfairly accused, or comparing their own behavior to others? If it is comparing to the behavior of others, then the author would be guilty by association. I don't know, have you heard that term before, but that term is used a lot in recent years. For instance, it may be assumed that if you hang out with substance abusers and illicit drug users, that you yourself do the same. It can be assumed that if you are around murderers, thieves, and liars, that you are a murderer, thief, or a liar. But if you're around God-fearing people, then you fear God, guilty by association. So then let us put this psalm into context. There are some who always want to compare themselves to someone else. There are some who have been falsely accused, misunderstood, and unfairly judged. These things can cause confusion and havoc. The person falsely accused by a, a jealous coworker now is in danger of losing their job. The young girl who is pregnant and not married, the couple whose marriage fails, those that feel that God has given up on them. 
And there are some in ministry that are judged for their witness and their message. But our society, society is full of judgments, false testimonies, and mistaken eyewitness. And each comes with repercussions for all involved and inadvertently for those that are not involved. It makes it difficult for an innocent person to know whom to turn. The psalmist here turns to God, letting God know that they have walked, <coughs> excuse me, letting God know that they have walked in integrity, meaning they have walked in honesty and are morally upright. For the Israelites, that meant walking with God, God is always with us, always with man. God walked in the garden with man in Genesis. Walking also implies a relationship because each time God walked with man, the historical text of the Old Testament tells of God walking and having conversations directly with Abram before he was Abraham with Isaac, with Jacob, before he was Israel, with Moses, through the Red Sea, to Canaan, and more. Walking with God in those days meant having a relationship and meant keeping God's laws. And this psalmist goes one further and states that those who walk with God are privileged to abide in God's tent and to dwell on God's holy hill. So for us today, that takes on a whole new meaning. Abiding in God's tent means to be in God's house. Throughout the years, God's house has had varied meanings, but it ultimately means to be able to worship and praise God no matter where we are. We do not only worship and praise God on our Sabbath day, our day of rest, but every day and anywhere we go, we can call on God to be near us and to walk with us so that we may walk in integrity by working for justice, peace, and shalom. And shalom means the wholeness, working for those things. This work will have setbacks, will have frustrations, and will have disappointments many times. But yet, God is still there walking with us. And sometimes we need to be reminded that God is there restoring us, reconciling us, and healing us. We need to be reminded that we have permission to give our anger, our pains, our misery, our shame, our confusion, give all of that to God so that we can walk in integrity and faithfulness. It means with walking with Jesus, on the way of the cross. Jesus began that journey to the cross by walking with those who were the tax collectors, the demon possessed, the, the fisher people, the, those with skin disease, the women, all of those who were considered by society unclean and outcasts. Jesus was always inclusive in his dealings with people. His concern was to show them the way and not to deny them access to God. In this Matthew scripture, Jesus did not shy away from his call. He knew that he would suffer tremendously at the hands of those who proclaimed to know the law. He would suffer physically, mentally, and spiritually, and he would be attacked. His trusted friend, Peter, even tried to tell him, stop it, just stop it, Jesus. You can make things happen differently. But Jesus' response to him was, Satan, get behind me. In other words, this has been the plan all along. Do not place a stumbling block in my way. Do not sway my thoughts away from doing God's will. So how many times in our lives have we been swayed to another's thoughts? 
It may have been as easy as our indecisive mind, not knowing what's for dinner or where to go for dinner, or for a suggestion, and that would just perk our taste buds. Like if someone was to say right now, let's go have fish and chips, I'd say, okay, let's go. I would just perk my, my taste buds for that, because right now I don't know what I would want. In Peter's case, how many of us would have had the nerve to tell Jesus, stop it. See, because in the verse right before this, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus has told the apostles that he was giving them the keys to the kingdom and the power to bind and to loose. And immediately, Peter uses that power to try to bind Jesus. So how many of us would have did that? I would not have done that. I don't think. But like Peter, we who have been grafted into the promises of God must learn to deny ourselves and what we think and to take up our cross and follow Jesus. So what does it mean to take up our cross and follow Jesus? But even more so, how do we practice that every day? How does the cross we are asked to bear relate to the cross of Jesus? Taking up our cross means that we have to try and understand different experiences of suffering. People have suffering experiences in their physical being, in their minds, and in their spirits. Some experiences are just life shattering, such as the unexpected death of a newborn or a person completing suicide. Some experiences have abused people. Um, it, it creates shame and guilt and loss in these people. Some people have physical reminders of the things that have happened to them. Taping, taking up our cross not only means the things that have happened to ourselves, but to also to those things that have happened to another. You see, Jesus says we must love one another, even in times of struggle or in times of another's suffering. To love them also means to say, get me behind, get behind me, Satan, because you are causing me to stumble or us to stumble. You are not, and we are not setting our things, uh, our mind on the things of heaven, of the divine, but on human things. Jesus said this to Peter, the one he named Peter, the rock, who was trying to protect him. But Jesus made it clear to Peter that he was living into his calling. Jesus lives and eats with them. He heals their wounds and protects them from their enemies. Jesus is willing, and he does, lay down his life for them and for us. He realizes he will be done great harm by those temple leaders. If we are to follow Jesus, we're also going to have to sweat, get bloody, and be broken. Those who have been misunderstood, lied on, stolen from, abused in mind, body, spirit, and those who have turned to Christ and all have found life in Christ. If we are to be followers of Jesus, we cannot be less vulnerable with, toward, or for others, but for others. Our concern so I know I'm going to get pushed back on this eventually, but our concern is not the purity of the church or the righteousness of our doctrine, but our willingness to follow Jesus into the world and onto the cross. We cannot control God or give Jesus conditions on how we will follow him. Because doing so, giving conditions to Christ, means that we're only protecting our own lives in our own institutions. But the good news here is that discipleship is here and now. 
Discipleship is in how we trust in God's word and how we obey that word. We don't have to bind Jesus for our own selves. We as individuals and as the church must faithfully follow and bear witness to Jesus, even at the risk of losing our, our individual, at the risk of losing our institution lives. It's by being Christ-like in the world that we will find resurrection and new life. Hallelujah and amen. Our affirmation of faith is also our vision, our vision mission statement for this church. And as we read this today, let us think a little bit more, take home a little bit more about what we're reading and how we can apply that in our lives. Please join me. With Jesus Christ as our head, we aspire to be a church, home, and family, visible and open to all in the community, where people come to be welcomed, included, loved, and nurtured, where people come to quench their spiritual thirst, we worship together to glorify God by offering meaningful spiritual experiences for people of all ages. Teach the gospel in such a way that it provides a sense of hope, meaning, and direction for people's lives. Care and pray for one another as we experience life's challenges. Equip people to use their spiritual gifts in ministry. Share our abundance as we reach out in service to our community and the world. And offer true hospitality to all, seeking to know them and their needs. Amen. Let it be so. Beverly. Okay. Oh, that's better. <laughs> so you can bring your offerings uh, in person. You can give a check or a money order by mail. You can do it on the online website, which is pcusagardencity.org, and during the week, during office hours. And now let's join in the doxology. Receive these gifts that we offer with grateful hearts and to use us for your ministry in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we'll sing uh, Rain Down, number 48, in the uh, Glory to God. Glory to God. Please be seated. 
Today is the day we celebrate our communion, our Lord's Supper. For us here, it's on the first Sunday, and sometimes during the year we do it other times, but today is the first Sunday. And people come from north, south, east, and west to join in this feast, this feast that was laid out by Jesus at the supper, his last supper. Friends, we'll go, we will receive the supper. God is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give thanks to you, creating God, breath of all being. The earth is yours and all that is in it and all who dwell therein. You founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the deep. You planted seeds in fertile ground to rise and sing your praise. You formed us from the earth and planted goodness in our souls that we might love like you. You call us to live your law of harmony and to long for your commands. Yet, when our disordered cravings bowed down our spirit, you did not leave us low, but bent down to meet us and grow us up again. Therefore, we lift our voices in thanksgiving for you have wondrously, wonderfully, wondrously made us by water and your life-giving spirit, you have more wondrously remade us to join the song of all creation and forever sing your praise. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you sold your word in Jesus to grow your kingdom here on earth and to draw us ever near. Jesus planted mercy wherever he went to reap a greater righteousness. He shared bread with outcasts and sinners and healed the brokenhearted. And we thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends. And told them, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and he said, Cup of the new salvation. He said, after do drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood.
poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembering me. Remembering his dying and rising, we offer you this bread and this wine. Grateful for his service and ourselves. God, pour out your spirit upon these gifts and all your people here today. Breathe your spirit over all creation that together we may cultivate peace in every corner of the world. Then bring us to that blessed mountain where with the meek and the pure in heart we will live forever in blessedness as we taste the fruits of heaven. If uh, Rosemary, would you like, could you come up please? We have, Rosemary will be holding gluten-free bread um, and, and cup to these. Beverly is holding the cup and I will be holding the bread.
Let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving all together. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and by the inspiration of your life-giving spirit, we worship you, creating God in songs of endless praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. So, this is time for information, a little information, um, uh, some information about the church that's worshiping with us. Wanted to let you know that this is their call, Faith Community, and actually right now they're a fellowship. They have not finished everything to become a church. They will be meeting in this building for up to one year and they're going to use Fellowship Hall in two of the classrooms. At times, they may be in the chapel, depending on what their service is for. So let's get rid of the first rumor. This is not being done for financial reasons. We are financially sound, because I know that thought was going through a couple people's minds based on conversations I've had. So no, this is, this is because they are God's people and we are here as God's people. Um, and um, this church, Garden City Presbyterian Church and Faith Community, we have discussed our theological differences. They are being born out of the Methodist Church. As with our policy, Stewardship approved the terms that was presented to them and worked out terms together and went to session and session as a recommendation. Because, you know, in our polity, uh, whatever committees makes approvals, we still get the, uh, we recommend to session whether to approve or disapprove things. And uh, stewardship recommended to approve. Stewardship um, and session um, met, discussed, and recommended to approve. The terms were approved, and this week paperwork was signed with them, and this is their first worship service with us today in this facility. So this is not a meeting because if we were to have a meeting, it would have to be two weeks announced. But if anybody has something they want to ask, a quick question, less than five minutes, we can do this. But any more than that, we have to do a meeting, and a meeting has to be announced for two Sundays, and on the third Sunday, we could have a meeting. Does anybody have any questions? I see there are memberships, um, there are members of stewardship and session here. So if anybody has any questions, um, I just had one question. I heard you say, is, is it the local Methodist church here that has split and they're coming from that church? Yes. Okay. Are there any others? Okay, thank you all. So now it's time for prayers of the people joys and concerns.
Listening God, you heard the prayers of the Israelites. Hear now these prayers, both spoken and silent. For peace where there is conflict. For food where there is hunger. For hope where there is despair. For help where there is sickness. For faith where there is fear. For life where there is death. Linda Romer. The one Jesus who conquers all that would defeat us and give us new life. We now pray the prayer the way he taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, Give Praise to the Lord.
Go in peace to love and serve. Our cross to follow in the way of Jesus our Lord. The blessing of God be with you. The love of Jesus fill you and the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you now and forevermore. Amen.